the Socrates, I think it was Socrates that said that the um, that definition, uh, the definition of terms, is the beginning of wisdom. So, with that in mind, I, th I think let's start with defining what we actually mean by uh, theology. The word theology. The word itself is a marriage of two uh, Greek words, theos, which means God, and logos, which means, uh, well, it means word, but it, it, it means something bigger than word. It, it refers to logic. We are, our word logic comes from logos. Um, and it, it refers to a whole system of thinking, a whole system of words and thinking about a particular topic. Um, so that Greek word logos actually finds its way in academic circles in a whole bunch of different words. So you get all the ologies. So psychology, sociology, that ology bit is from logos. So a system of thought. So theos, logos, theology, a system of thought about God. So that God himself is the subject of our class together. Um, Roger Olson has defined theology this way. Christian theology is reflecting on and articulating the beliefs about God and the world that Christians share as followers of Jesus Christ. So that's going to be the focus um, of our time together. Now, um, let me talk a little bit about some differences between um, theology and philosophy. I think this is a, just an important uh, introductory matter because theology and philosophy are two fields of thought and study that deal with very similar topics. They deal with some of the big questions of life. So, um, in uh, th th those big thoughts or th those big topics in the field of philosophy are as follows. You have metaphysics. Metaphysics looks at the, the question, what is real? What is real? What is reality? Um, does reality only consist of um, physical things that I can see, that I can touch, that I can measure, or is there something beyond the physical, metaphysical? Is there something, is there an unseen world? Is there a spiritual world as well? So what does reality consist of? Is it only the material physical world, or does reality also consist of a non-material spiritual world, metaphysics? Um, epistemics asks the question, what is true? And how do you know that something is true as opposed to being false? I think most of us believe that it's true that when you close your fridge door, that little light inside of your fridge goes off. But how do you know it's true? You can't actually see it go off whenever you are engaged with your fridge, the light is on. And when you close the fridge door, you believe that the light is off, but how do you know? So one way for you to know would be uh, through direct observation. This is the way science tends to try to get at truth. So you could put a, a camera inside of your fridge and record it. Um, or to be absolutely sure, if you don't trust your camera, you could crawl inside of the fridge yourself and close the door and direct observation. 
So empirical evidence is the basis of truth. But it's, that's not the only basis of truth. You could also use reason. You could, you could reason and say, well, the life span of this bulb, if it was on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the lifespan of this little bulb would be a year or two years. But that little bulb's been in my fridge now for seven years. I haven't replaced it for seven years. So you could deduct from that using reason and say, therefore, that light must go off. Or you could look at that little button in the door that pushes against another little button and you reason, well, when I close the door, that pushes that button and the light goes off and so on. So how do you get at what is true? One, one approach is empirical evidence, which is typically is the way of science. And the other way to get at it is uh, reason and rationalism, which tends to be um, the, the, the approach of philosophy and social sciences. Uh, what about ethics? Ethics asks the question, what is moral? So philosophy and religion both look at that question. Politics, how should we govern ourselves? Politics and religion looks at that as well. Aesthetics, what is beautiful? And logic, how should we reason? So both religion and philosophy look at these big questions of life. So there's, there is significant overlap. Where religion is different, and particularly Christian religion, and we, this is a survey of Christian beliefs, is that Christians affirm something called revelation. That, that there is a, a way of getting at what is true that is not necessarily, necessarily empirically verified through direct observation and is not necessarily verifiable through rational means either, but through revelation. There, there's a third source of knowing, and that is that God has revealed himself. And it's a way of knowing, it's not irrational, it's transrational. It's beyond the rational. <clears throat> I think as well, religion differs from philosophy in that proponents of religion and adherents of religion, including Christianity, have a, have a degree of personal investment that perhaps goes beyond the mere study of philosophy. So, there are some similarities between religion and philosophy, but there are also some differences. And typically, Christianity has used philosophy as, um, as a part of a way of explaining the faith, uh, especially in the field of apologetics or defending the faith, the use of reason, the use of arguments, and so on various evidences of God, for instance, uh, God's existence come from philosophy.